if you've watched my channel for a while now, you know that I review the Wharfdale Heritage Linton 85th anniversary about three years ago. And that has been one of my mainstays for recommendations for a speaker that doesn't cost an arm and a leg. With the, not Advent, what's what I'm looking for here? With the new coming Super Linton that just came out like, like a week ago, I think they announced it. Some of the things that have been updated may warrant your consideration for purchasing this upgraded version. Now, some things, maybe not so much. I'm going to address some concerns, some pros and cons, and the trade-offs for the Super Linton versus the regular Linton later. But up front, first, we're going to focus more on the Super Linton, what I heard, and the objective data to, to kind of correlate with what I heard. Now, when I set these speakers up, I tried a number of ways, just like I always do, and I listen first before I measure. Initially, I set them up about three feet off the wall, so three feet from the back of the speaker to the wall, like you see here. I was also listening to the Lintons with the grill on. That's per the manufacturer's, or actually per the designer's recommendation. And I also found that listening to the speakers with the tweeter on the outside, because it's an asymmetrical design. So if you set up the tweeters where they're on the outside of the speaker, that, in my opinion, tended to lend the more linear response in room. As far as angle, like how do you set these up? Do you point them directly at you or do you point them off axis? Well, this is a graphic that I use to kind of help me define for you all what I mean when I say on axis versus off axis. On axis here is in black. Off axis at 30 degrees would be here in this red. Now, typically what I'll try is zero, eh, maybe around 10, 15, and then 30 degrees for most speakers. I asked the manufacturer what they recommended and they said roughly aim them toward each shoulder. So your right speaker at your right shoulder, your left speaker at your left shoulder, which is equivalent to about 10 degrees. Initially, I tried these directly on axis and they sounded fantastic, but it sounded a little bit lifted in the treble around maybe four to six kilohertz, just a little bit. Then I tried them at 30 degrees facing straight out into the room, but the, the highs to me were too subdued. So then I went to the manufacturer's recommendation of aimed about 10 degrees off axis or so. And I found that doing so lended itself to a more linear response. Of course, this could be cited bias because, hey, the manufacturer told me to try this. I know that they're positioned a certain way and maybe my brain is tricked into hearing what it wants to hear. But we'll also discover some of this information in the data later and you'll get to kind of understand why I recommend about 10 degrees off axis. Ultimately, what I landed on was to position these speakers about one foot from the wall, so about one foot from the back of the speaker to the wall behind it, and then again to tow them out about 10 degrees with the tweeters on the outside and the grills on. To me, this lended the most balanced in-room response. If the speakers are too far out from the wall, the kick base, that 50 to 60 hertz area that I really enjoy, wasn't quite as strong. And when it pushed up against closer to the wall, it lended itself to a little bit more impact in that particular area. Also, the data does indicate that placing the speaker closer to the wall would be advantageous because it does look like the speaker was designed to be placed a little bit closer to the wall than the previous version of this Linton. That means if you had these Lintons right now and you have them sitting out really far away from the wall and maybe they're just in the way, you might want to consider the Super Lintons because they will work better a little bit closer to the wall. Throughout my trials and tribulations, setting these speakers directly at me, pointed away from me, brought off the wall, et cetera, et cetera, the one constant that I felt was there was that they were a neutral sounding speaker. Mid-range to tweeter handoff was really superb as well as mid-bass to mid-range. The only thing that seemed to be affected based on how I aimed these speakers and how I positioned them to the wall was just, I would say, more of the extremes. So again, if you point them directly at you, there's gonna be a mild treble bump around four to six K, could sound a tad sibilant, but in my experience, it really wasn't noteworthy. Every once in a while, it might just call attention to itself, but really not a big deal. But overall, these speakers are very neutral. They were very fun to listen to. And it's one of those kind of speakers that you could set up and you could listen to for hours on end with any genre of music that you wanted to. And in fact, that's often what I did. These speakers do have a very wide radiation pattern, about plus or minus 70 degrees, which is right in that sweet spot that I personally prefer, which is usually between 60 and 70 degrees on the half radius, right? So if you take the speaker and you go 70 degrees out this way, 70 degrees out that way, that provides a pretty nice wide soundstage. It gives some nice mix with the sidewall reflections, which I do find helpful, especially with a well-designed speaker that has good off-axis dispersion, such as this one. And once again, I'm gonna recommend these speakers just as I did the previous Linton. 
Do I like these more than the previous Linton? Well, you're asking me to go on something that is oral memory from three years ago. Now, three years ago, I remember being very impressed with the Linton 85th Anniversary Edition. I went back and watched my review from that a few hours ago just to kind of prep myself for this review. And everything that I was saying in that video about how great the regular Linton was, regular Linton, compared to this new Super Linton, really stands firm. The only thing that I would really say is different in terms of audibility, other than the bass, would be the regular Linton was a little bit too soft in the upper mid range to lower treble region, around like one to three kilohertz. It just kind of had a little bit of a mild scoop, and that was actually the intent of the designer. Whereas this speaker doesn't really seem to have that. So there's a little bit more attack, a little bit more in terms of dynamic sound, if you will. And I personally prefer what the Super Lintons have to offer in that regard. The other thing that I noticed was that at higher volumes, the bass seemed to behave very well. From going to lower volumes to higher volumes, I didn't notice a lack of impact at those range extremes. That is what I would refer to as dynamic range. So if you're listening at lower volume and you have a nice kick drum and it's nice and impactful, and then you turn it up to maybe, let's say you go from like 75 decibels to 95 decibels, or 65 decibels to 85 decibels. If you have a change in the sound profile, maybe you don't have that same kick drum impact, then typically that's going to indicate that there is a lack of dynamic range in the speaker. So now let's talk about some of the tech specs while I show you some videos of the speaker taken apart and put together. These are provided as a matched pair. And in my experience, these seem to do quite well in that regard. I measured both speakers. They were within about plus or minus one decibel from each other. For $24.99 current price, you get a pair of matching custom stands as well. This is a three-way speaker design, which features a one-inch soft dome tweeter, a five-inch woven Kevlar mid-range, and an eight-inch woven Kevlar woofer. It's a ported design with dual rear ports. Cabinet construction uses MDF and particle board sandwiched with high damping adhesive. So this makes for a very non-resonant enclosure. There is a real wood veneer attached to it. And I also want to note that this speaker has a lot of filling or stuffing inside of it. That also helps to dampen standing waves inside of the enclosure and therefore cut down on additional resonances. Crossover points are spec at 550 hertz and 2500 hertz. Weight is about 43 pounds or about 20 kilograms. Let's go ahead and cut over to the data now. And first, before I show you the data, I also wanna mention again, this data was taken with the grill cloth on and with the tweeter facing the outside. This is the right speaker in that regard. All the data that you're about to see is captured using my Clipple Near Field Scanner, which is a state-of-the-art robotic device that allows me to get anechoic data in a non-anechoic environment, such as the garage, which you see here. Starting off with the impedance, we can see that it mostly looks pretty good. I do see that it dips down to about three ohm at about 150 hertz. So in my opinion, you might find that a four ohm stable amplifier will be best for these speakers. However, the sensitivity on these is about 88 decibels. So you could try using these with an AVR or maybe a lower powered amplifier at first. And if you find the need to upgrade, then you could probably do that later. Here's the frequency response on axis. Again, mean SPL, 88.2 decibels. That's about three decibels higher than the previous version. F3 is at 77 Hertz and F10 is at 34 Hertz. Now this is a little bit higher than the previous version. I'm gonna talk more about that later. So hold on to that thought. But overall linearity is within about plus or minus two decibels. It's a very good linear speaker. This is the CEA 2034 data set. You'll notice there's a little bit of diffraction right here around 1.5 to about two kilohertz. If you turn the speaker off axis a little bit, 10 degrees, that'll help bring up the black line above the green line, which kind of indicates that there's gonna be a little less diffraction. And then if you tow it out to about 30 degrees, then you're gonna have less diffraction. But when you do that, the high frequency is gonna drop a little bit, which is what you see here in the estimated in-room response. This blue line indicates pretty much what I heard in room. So first off, I'm gonna note that extension down to about 40 Hertz in room with the extended base shelf, this little scoop right here. Now, if it were flat right through here, that would typically indicate that you're gonna to need to give room between the wall behind the speaker and the back of the speaker. But in this particular case, because it's kind of scooped right through there, that typically indicates a design that is intended to be placed closer to the wall behind the speaker. If you go out to here and you look at these 30 degree angles, you'll see that on the higher end, you're about two decibels apart. So that's why I don't really recommend you point these speakers directly out into the room at 30 degrees. Of course you can, if you want to, it won't be a huge detriment, but you're gonna miss a little bit of that very top end 
high frequency. Here is the contour plot in horizontal, which gives us an idea of the overall radiation pattern. This speaker is about plus or minus 70 degrees at the negative six dB mark. Vertically, this is what I spoke about earlier. So this indicates that you're about plus or minus 20 degrees. Now, most two-way designs are gonna be like 10 to 15 degrees. Three-way designs are usually 20 to 30 degrees vertical region. So you can go about 20 degrees above the tweeter or below the tweeter on the speaker and kind of be in that safe zone. Although you are, of course, gonna lose some top end in that. Now I'm gonna do a quick comparison between the previous Linton or the regular Linton and then this new Super Linton. So we're gonna start off with the frequency response. The previous Linton or the regular Linton, whatever we're calling it, uh, the sensitivity is about 85 decibels. F3 is at 52 Hertz, F10 is at 35 Hertz. And then the speaker is about plus or minus two decibels in terms of tolerance. Now the Super Linton is about the same in terms of tolerance, a little bit lower in this one and a half to two kilohertz region due to some diffraction. Sensitivity, however, is about three decibels higher. F3 is at 77 Hertz and F10 is at 34 Hertz. So this speaker starts to roll off a little bit earlier, but as I said, that's part of the design that will allow you to put this speaker closer to the wall. If you have this speaker at one foot away from the wall, this particular area is probably gonna be boosted a little bit and it may sound a little bit too boomy or resonant, depending on your room, but typically that's what you'll find. With this version of the speaker, this cupped right through here allows you to place the speaker a little bit closer to the wall without it being too boomy or too resonant. So that's really just up to you and how you wanna set these speakers up. To me, the overall factor here is just the sensitivity. You get about three decibels higher. So that's half the amplifier power that you're gonna need. Here's the layover of the estimated interim response. And I had to attenuate the Super Linton by about three decibels to get these to line up. And we can see that when we do that, the Super Linton has a little bit of a bump around four to six K, fills in this particular area. So this was the only, gripe that I really had with the previous Linton was that around 1K to 2K was just a little bit subdued. And this one kind of fills that in a little bit. And then we have the base roll off differences, which I've previously explained. Distortion at 3% for the regular Linton and then distortion with the Super Linton. You can see that the Super Linton has a lot lower distortion in the mid range, but it does peak a little bit higher than the previous Linton around 50, 60, 70 Hertz. What about multi-tone distortion with the previous Linton? This is what you have. And with the new Linton, this is what you have. So roughly they're about the same, but the main difference is that the new Super Linton is lower above the mid-range area going up into the higher frequency area. What about dynamic range? Well, this is the one area that really stands out in terms of objective data. This is the previous Linton, and then this is the new Linton. Go back to the previous Linton. See how there's a huge difference between about uh, maybe 50 to 80 Hertz this means that the previous Linton doesn't quite have the dynamic range. So it's not gonna play the same at lower volume as it is at higher volume, whereas the new Super Linton will. And it's gonna have a little bit more oomph in that kick drum region, which is the area that I'm most likely to notice and the area that I pay attention to the most in my reviews when I'm particularly focused on dynamic range. So I'm listening for a kick drum. And what happens as I turn it up louder? Does it sound kind of the same level as the rest of the bandwidth, like the mid range and the high frequency area, or does it feel like it's been cut off? Is it compressed? With the Super Linton, you don't get that. And that does it for my review. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them in the comments section below, and I will try to get to them, but I can't promise that I will. I work a day job and I do tons of other stuff outside of that. If you want to support this channel, you can do so a couple different ways. One would be to join me at patreon.com slash Aaron's Audio Corner. And the other alternative would be to use any of my affiliate links. And I will drop an affiliate link for the Super Linton because I'm definitely gonna recommend it. As my final going away thought, if you're trying to figure out, should I go ahead and get the Super Linton or not? I would say that if you are trying to decide between the Linton and the Super Linton and you don't have either one of them, go ahead and spend the money and get the Super Linton. If you already own the Linton and you're trying to decide is it worth the thousand dollar upgrade to get the Super Linton, that's a little bit closer to me. I would say it depends on what you want. The main benefit that you're gonna get with the Super Linton is it's gonna sound, in my opinion, better overall. It's just mainly primarily due to that one kilohertz scoop not being there no more because that was my only gripe really about the previous Linton. You're gonna get increased dynamic range and you're gonna have the flexibility to put the speaker closer to the wall than you can with the regular Linton. And if you consider buying this one or any of the other speakers that I've talked about today, please consider using my affiliate links in the description below. I will actually put one for this particular speaker because I do recommend it. So if you're considering buying the speaker, please use my affiliate link and earns me a small commission at no additional cost for you. You've already seen the data. You know what I think about it. If you think I'm shilling, 
that's fine. But it's a really good speaker, and it's one that I would be happy to own, as well as the previous version. Either one of them are great speakers to me. I hope you make the right decision that makes sense for you. Order these speakers from somewhere that you can trust and send them back if you don't like them. But I really think that most people are going to be very happy with this speaker sound. It's very smooth. It's very neutral. It's very natural. And I really can't find anything to complain about it overall. So I say it's a good speaker. That's my opinion. I'll talk to you all later. Take care. Peace.